see you, man. It's been good uh, to see you, man. I know it's been an age, man. Well, it was an age, and it was a, just a small fraction of of our life where we actually got to cross paths. Totally. We had, yeah, we actually met like um, like a decade ago from yeah. our our mutual friend uh, Michelle Gardner. I think yeah, it might yeah. have been a New Year's Eve party. It was, yeah. It was one of the New Year's parties that I used to I used to throw an open house New Year, New Year's Eve party and Yeah, I was thinking I it was at your people, place. I was like just bring whoever you want to bring and I remember you you coming and <laughs> she's like are I was you like, sure? Hey, like going, man, that's a cool dude, man. I'm like <laughs> I like that dude. Well, you know, I tried my best to to come off as a normal person. <laughs> you you yeah, succeeded was, very well. Yeah, it was a great time and then you know, as as is uh, uh, as you do in this culture of ours, we met. We had a great time. We we brought in the new year, and we uh, followed each other on Facebook as, as yeah, is the exactly. custom. And uh, and so you've been popping up in my news feed for a decade. So I almost feel like we've been hanging out a little bit uh, <laughs> this whole time because you know, there's always a little something you know over the years. And then I'm watching uh, the Orville. Uh, mm. Season two, the episode Sanctuary, yeah. and all of a sudden, boom, there you were. And I instantly recognized you. I'm like, oh, my God, that's Mark. That's Mark. Mark's <laughs> on the Orville. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. And uh, and it was, a, it was a big surprise, as many things are on that show. And I, yeah. what I want to know, what I'm sure the audience wants to know, these, uh, <laughs> hey, audience, how you doing? How the hell did you did this happen? Because this show is very uh, involved as far as yeah. you know, they're very secretive. That I'm sure you signed a non disclosure agreement. Oh, yeah, longer oh, yeah. than any you've ever seen before. Mm-hmm. And but I want to know just dipping our toes in right when it first started. Uh, did did uh, like your agent or somebody just give you word? Hey, there's an audition coming up. It actually wasn't. No, it wasn't right off the bat. In fact, when I got the audition, it was really kind of random. I mean, uh, yeah, at the risk of getting caught in the mire of like min- minutia of of the industry, which I think to the average listener outside of anyone in Hollywood is just remarkably dull and freaking boring <laughs> um, well only if you're there like, in, in my experience yeah, usually if you're there like, usually so just I sitting had, in a waiting I, room like i have an agent i basically it had been someone who was basically only representing me commercially for a long time at like the beginning of like i think it was about a year and a half ago or whatever i just had a conversation with them and i said listen you're wasting my talent i said you know i can do commercials but i would never buy crest from me <laughs> my strength and where where I do most of my work is like in theater and film and in you know television like I I'd been just getting work on my own through hustling for a long time and so I you know I said to them I'm like if you really want to take advantage of my my strengths you're going to start submitting me for like film and TV and stuff cuz mm. uh, like it's not going to happen through commercial yeah. And then all of a sudden, just randomly out of the blue, and they kind of like, you know, they kind of wrote me back and they're like, okay, we'll take it under consideration. And then like a couple months later, I just got this audition from the Orville and it was through LA casting. And I was like, did I submit for that? Mm-hmm. Or was it them? And then, you know, they kind of called me and they were like, hey, we got you an audition for the Orville. And I was like, great. And I went in and I mean, it was, you know, as you saw in the episode, like it's a small role. It wasn't like it was kind of like I had pages and pages and pages of dialogue. Mm-hmm. And I went and, you know, you, you have a couple of lines and stuff. And I went in and I hit it. And like two days later, they called me and they were kind of like, okay, they want to put you on a veil. And I was like, great. Man. Wow. <laughs> like, that's it just awesome. happened just like that. Yeah. So, it, it, I mean, it was really like extremely short and extremely quick. And it just, you know, happened. Um, and, uh, you know, the casting directors apparently were like really loved what I brought in. And, uh, you know, it was it was great. It was fantastic. Well, I mean, yeah, the role was uh, well, to, to the to the Orville fan, uh, that episode was a world building episode, which is yeah. what fans really, really love is learning a little bit more about this world. So just ha- uh, having you there as a Salayan, which is a very popular race on the show. Uh, just saying, oh, oh my God, there's another Soleil, and that just makes people, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, excited. And yeah, I think your your uh, your dialogue was something, you know, you were agreeing with emotion that was being people were trying to pass or something like that. I said, no, I think we should do this or that. And uh, a a small role, like you said, but a big experience. 
for for those who would have killed to have been in 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 oh, that seat, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. You I were, mean, it was it yeah, was you, awesome. It you, was great. You literally had a front row seat. Uh, yeah, I really, I really. Yeah, there was yeah, there's rows of delegates mm-hmm. there, and you were in the front row, and you had an aisle seat, which oh, yeah. everybody when, knows is the best seat to have. When I walked out onto the stage that morning, and I mean, it was it really like truly from like just like a geek actor standpoint, like mm. you know, you get cast and everything, and then they they bring you in, you know, for costuming and makeup and everything, and I had no idea. Like I was mm. like. I really wasn't sure exactly who I was playing. You know, I was like, I wasn't, I'm like, and, and they brought me in just to costume me and you go there. And I mean, the technical people on that work on that show, Mm -hmm. uh, the people who build the costumes, the people who do the makeup, it's unbelievable. Like, I mean, mind boggling the artistry that go that these, I mean, they are, artisans i mean yeah. they're, they're just insane like i was just in awe just, my mouth was just oh just jaw dropping looking at all of these beautiful costumes and they brought out because they were kind of like well what are we going to put you in what are we going to put you in and they brought out this costume they were kind of like guessing because you know it's what they do when they have like a lot of roles to fill i think mm-hmm. is that they really they go into this vast warehouse of stuff and go um all right let's see what we can get yeah absolutely and they grabbed this thing off the rack and they brought it out and it fit just like a glove. And even they were like, man, we don't have to do anything to this. We don't have to alter it or anything. <laughs> and it was just the coolest freaking costume. And, you know, when I when they I got into the costume and they put me in the makeup and everything and I walked out on the stage. And when they said, you know, they were kind of like, OK, you're going to be right here in the front row and you're going to be between F. Murray Mm-hmm. And and you know, and at first they said Murray, and I was kind of like, oh Murray. And I turned and looked, and I was like, that's freaking F. Murray Abraham coming over to sit next to me. And I was like, oh my god. Yeah. And then yeah. Victor Garber came over and sat down, and I was like, okay, here we go. Yeah, you that's know, that's the first like, thing I thought of when I saw you in the episode. I'm like, because you know, I know I know how audition works and getting the roles work, and you yeah. only know you only know really kind of what you need to know for that spot, for, especially exactly, for a show like yeah. this. I mean, there's probably yeah. so much about um, uh, you. Probably you're sitting there not even knowing that you're a, you're a superhero, sitting there with yeah. superpowers. <laughs> you have super strength and stuff. I'm like, he probably didn't no, even totally. know that. No, totally. And I had done I had done enough research to know that. And I kind of loved that about my the character that I got cast in. I was like, ah, I was like, yes, they do have. We have super strength, but it's yeah. like we we honor intellect above. Yeah. Above and I was like, oh, that's great! I love that. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, but I figured you should. That was a lot of fun. I figured because I, I put myself, <laughs> I put myself in your place, and I'm thinking you probably showed up for this role. Maybe knew. Yeah, I'm sure you did your research. You're a serious actor, uh, uh-huh. and uh, <laughs> and uh, you probably showed up, and, and they probably didn't tell you. Oh, it's going to be directed by Jonathan Frakes. It's yeah, gonna, had no idea. F. Murray had Abraham. No idea. Yeah. When he walked out, it was like, what the frick? I was yeah. like, <laughs> you probably figured, okay, Seth MacFarlane will probably be there. You probably figured that much out. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, you knew that, uh, I mean, Seth was in the scene, so I knew Seth was going to be there, mm-hmm. but you really never, you know, you don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, most of the time with TV, it's like the directors are on, you know, they're on rotation. And you have no idea. Mm-hmm. But when Jonathan walked out, I just couldn't believe, I was like, this is freaking perfect i was like this is just yeah. in terms of like just the entire you know global aspect <laughs> of the universe and what i think that seth is truly going for with the orville and everything mm-hmm. being able to have jonathan there to direct and he was fantastic i mean he's he is just a a titanic presence of energy i mean oh, he, yeah. he 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 just is an incredible presence and incredibly effect, uh, effective and efficient and professional i mean he's he's really really cool did really. uh did he give you any uh, specific direction i mean i'm sure you had to do a little something uh, i felt you know i gotta say it was the one thing about that day that i truly uh felt really kind of proud of from the standpoint that it's like, you know, I I have been doing this a long time and friends of mine, you know, it's like, 
but not a lot of people know who I am. I haven't done a lot of stuff that people have done, but if you knew the amount of stuff that I've done, a friend of mine a couple of years ago said, like, you're the Michael Caine of stuff that nobody has seen. <laughs> you know, it's like you're, you're the Michael Caine of, like, just absolutely, like, you know, you know. No, no you got <laughs> no, a long no, IMD. No audience, yeah. no audience material. Mm -hmm. And so I walked out on that stage, and it was, you know, it's massive. I mean, you know, What's we this shot at Disney. Yeah, I was just all. There were hundreds, I mean, hundreds of extras, all of them made up, and, you know, cameras everywhere on booms and, you know, just remote control stuff. I mean, it's like a, just a thousand people mm -hmm. there, and you're just kind of like, I had a moment where I'm kind of like, this, whoa, you know, you have a little fluttering, but then I was like, I, I just really took a breath and I was like, no, you, you know what you're doing, do your job, you know what they want, which I did. And I never got a note mm -hmm. and I was really the only, and I, especially with a, a day like that day, which was like, it was a, it was huge. It was a, a huge scene. Yeah. There were a lot of moving parts. There was a lot of stuff going on, you know, in every sense of the word from, uh, you know, from movement within the episode, acting technically. Th there were a lot of moving parts that day. Mm -hmm. And on those types of days, you know, m my experience has been, you know, when you're playing a small role like the one that I was doing, your job is to hit that mark over and over and over and over and over again. Like you just, you just hit the mark. How many, how many marks did you have to hit? How many times I did over that, and over again? I did, did those lines. I did those lines probably forty-five times that day. Wow. I, I, I have to say, a pro, at least, I would say at least. Wow. And uh, not to mention was, all the other people that had lines and speeches exactly. and. And I will say, I really, and I've done again. I've done enough of this stuff for long enough that when we finally wrapped and I mean, it was, it was a long day. I mean, mm -hmm. it was something like 12 hours or something like that. When we did the final wrap on the final take, the AD, the assistant director came running up to me and he was like, thank you. He was like, you were on point all day. You didn't miss one. And he was like, and I knew I was like, I was the only one here who did not fuck up one oh yeah. can i say that oh or, yeah you can, can, wait, can yeah you it's, me out? I was it's like, the I internet know. you can say whatever you want i was like <laughs> i don't know what we could say who did not fuck up once yeah and was like and that makes their job easier that's mm -hmm. that is your job is to make their job easier because yeah. they're going to have enough headaches with well yeah well as we know i mean parts that have going on any production is only five percent acting and the rest of it is just setting everything up absolutely all the absolutely. lights the you know where people need to be the sound everything. most of it's most of it's the technical mm -hmm. most of it is the technical stuff especially on a day like that and honestly what what i what i saw the episode it also really shows you um just how talented their their team is mm -hmm. like on the back end as well their post team and their their editing team because i was looking at it and you know it's like I have, you know, I've done a lot of directing on stage as well. I've done a lot of film, but I've done, you know, I know how it all works. I've been doing it long enough that I was trying to kind of like, I was watching cameras and I was tracing stuff. And I was like, I have no idea how they're going to cut this together. I was like, it was, it seemed to be so all over the place by yeah. the end of the day. But, you know, I, well, but yeah, you knew was... it was like, no, they're, pro they're you know, they, they're, they're pros. They're, they're. Death yeah, Beth, they, you know? <laughs> they they take it very very seriously, and it's uh oh yeah, and with, with the scene with the well just the whole episode, which I'm sure you knew nothing about until you saw, uh, until you saw it air, but you knew what was going on in your scenes. Um, well, we knew that. I mean, we got the script, okay. so it's like I knew what the episode was, and the episode was fantastic. You know, I, just just on the page, mm -hmm. the episode was great. I was like, this is this is, you know, awesome, and uh, you know, I I. It, it is the thing about Orville that, you know, I, I found fascinating just from the very beginning of just how Seth is trying to walk this line, like right on the fence of 
being Star Trek and being mm. a satire of Star Trek. Yeah. And I, I just love how he's really, really, really trying to walk that line at like, like literally right down the middle. It mm-hmm. feels like, at least yeah. to me. Watching well, yeah, that. that's the, the show, especially the first season. It was like, okay, we are going to take this idea that's not being used anymore. This idea of what, what Gene Roddenberry started and no one's really doing it anymore. We're going to yeah. start off, use that as a springboard. And then every season try to find our own voice, which yeah. every, every season they do. And uh, especially, but in that episode, Sanctuary, it was such mm-hmm. an important, it was also very uh, uh, appropriate for, for things that are going on, you know, in exactly. our own society, uh, uh, you know, kind of civil rights uh, stuff going on as well. Uh, Rina Owen, who played uh, Havina, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, who's an amazing actor, what did, uh, you know, because besides playing your role and, and, and being, you know, sitting there and listening to these things going on and, and trying to think, okay, how would this character be be experiencing, you know, these speeches and, and monologues going on? Uh, yeah. Was there that side of you, that Mark side of you there going, oh, my God, I'm watching this great performance from the, you know, Well, no, I mean, and it was really, you know, the way these things work, you know, uh, because Rena was actually right next to me on my left. And then Victor Garber was on the other side of her. Mm -hmm. So she sat down next to me in the, you know, in the makeup and I hadn't seen any of the makeup. So I was just like, she sat down. I was just like, wow, man. And but she sat down and she was just like, you know, she was like, do you mind? You know, uh, uh, her, you know, she has an Australian accent. I, I have a, a, a weak Australian accent <laughs> at best. Uh, but she was like, you know, do you mind going over the lines with me, love? You know, and, and so I just sat there. I was like, sure. And we pulled out the signs and we just like ran lines. I just ran lines with her so that she was ready because, you know, as you saw, you know, she had heavy lifting in yeah. that scene, heavy lifting. And she had just come like she had like just gotten in. Mm-hmm. She she had been working another project, uh, and I think she either got in that morning or like late night the night before. So she got yeah. to set and was just like boom. Yeah, and of course and she, she probably had hours freaking, of makeup to do. Oh, totally hours of makeup, and freaking jumped in. You know, I mean, she absolutely just jumped in, and so basically, I really kind of like sat there, and really was just kind of like, I'm just going to support. When, mm-hmm. Like, whatever she needs, she kind of sat down and was, you know, she turned right to me and was kind of like, do you mind running lines? I was like, you got it. <laughs> and so, like, we would we would break between takes and, uh, you know, I'd be like, you know, do you want to run something? And she, you know, she'd be like, all right, give me, the, she'd give me, you know, another section of the scene or whatever. Yeah. And, um, and she's, you know, as you saw, I mean, she's so, she has wonderful presence and and such command and she was so nice like mm. she was so cool um and very complimentary and 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 just cool easy going like she was just great yeah. well you she know the cool. that's what i hear a lot about you know these these actors that we kind of you know fawn over that are just great and they're, they're always just so wanting to work and uh like very giving um I want to know yeah. how long you were there before you realized that uh, Tony Todd was uh, sitting behind you <laughs> over two left. I know, there. I know, I know. That took a while because you get kind of like uh, it was the one thing where you where you're uh, you know you kind of get lost. <laughs> you know, you just get kind of like zeroed in and zoned in, and then after a while, it was just like, oh my gosh, you know, you're just. And that that's what it felt kind of like kind of the whole day was yeah. just like a nonstop process of the, just every once in a while you'd look around and go, Oh yeah, that, that, you did that person and that person, that person, a couple, I mean, a couple of times, even just like looking down, I'd look at Seth and I'd be like, I, I wouldn't like see Seth. And then all of a sudden I would kind of like take a breath and go like, Oh, it's Seth MacFarlane. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, that that's, that's freaking Seth MacFarlane. Yeah. <laughs> and you're just kind of like, okay. You know, now, how did he how did he seem on set? Because you know he's got a lot on the line with with the show, and he has a lot of responsibility. Um, besides playing the role, he has yeah. to, he's probably directing in his mind while Tony, Jonathan Frakes is directing as well. There's there he you know I mean I didn't have a ton of interaction with him, mm-hmm. um, but the one thing that is obvious and apparent all the time 
is just how uh like immensely competent and talented that dude is and you can t- i mean he just has a laser focus mm-hmm. i mean just laser focus and you yeah. can tell you just just looking at him you know it's just it's churning like it's just it's never off mm-hmm. there's always stuff churning he would always kind of be thrown in little things to Jonathan and everything of like, well, why don't we try this? Why don't we try this? Why don't we, you know, let's, let's turn this around or why don't you get up on this line or, you know? Yeah. Um, he's the boss. You, yeah. He's the boss. And, and he definitely like nothing is left to chance. Mm-hmm. You, you can tell like he has his, he has his fingerprints on, like on every aspect of that show, every aspect of the show. So if they ever did a CSI crossover, he would be guilty. They would find his print all over the place, right? <laughs> One question, uh, going back to, yeah. the, to the makeup, because, mm-hmm. uh, you know, some of the, the regulars on the show that, you know, that play aliens that are, you know, permanent cast members, I know yeah. uh, uh, Salayans as well, you know, you know, you have the mm-hmm. forehead pieces, the ear pieces, yeah. the nose piece. Yeah. Uh, but when I usually see them have to do a full cast uh for that did they have to do any casting you know a cast on you at all or they just they just worked it out when you got there no and i was actually kind of like there was a little part of me the you know definitely the little nerdy part of me was kind of like well i didn't get to do a cast yeah uh but you know on the day of i was very thankful i was kind of sure i'm not claustrophobic we could do one yeah i exactly (laughs) no i just they they had um you know, they just had little pieces and they have tons of them. You can tell over, you know, they've, mm-hmm. they've got them all like set aside and, you know, everything is organized by like alien race and alien class. And, you know, I mean, they've got they've got everything uh, all set aside. And so they had these like two little pieces uh, formed to me and it took very little time to really get them form to my face and to my ears and stuff like that wow so the, like you said they're they are professionals they are they, oh, they work wonders they're incredible now they're incredible uh now i was wondering how much experience with the show did you have uh before being cast on did you did you ever watch any of it before or? yeah i would watched a couple of the episodes of the first season i i tend to have a short attention span so mm-hmm. it's like uh, there are very few shows that like keep me, but like I'd watched a couple of shows and I was like, Oh, this is cool. But I hadn't watched it since season one. Mm-hmm. And season uh, one I, and season two are very cast. different. Very different. Yeah. Very different. And once I, even once I got the script, uh, you know, for, for my episode, I was like, Oh, they're really, I mean, going back to what you were talking about before in terms of like wanting to kind of tap into the original energy, what Roddenberry was going for with Star Trek. Mm -hmm. I I really was like, I, you know, I, you could, you could definitely tell the movement in terms of, you know, a, a a soberness or a seriousness that, that Seth was trying to incorporate Mm -hmm. uh, into the show. And, you know, but more than anything, that I was really impressed with was that I was like, Oh, this is, yeah, this is what, what Rodmary was going for in terms of like, it really is about the exploration of how, like how, how do you interact when there yeah. are such serious, when, when there are such serious extremes and even on my, my one line, like it was really interesting. Uh, you know, I, I posted on, Facebook, um, you know, the night that the episode Mm -hmm. aired, you know, that was when I can finally, especially once I, my, you know, my friends on the East coast, I was like, did I make the final cut? And they were like, you made it. (laughs) Uh, cause not everybody did. You know, there was a lot of stuff going on in that scene. And, uh, one of my friends posted and she was like, I I'm, she's like, I'm disappointed in, in where your character landed on the issue. And we actually got into a debate, though, you know, that yeah. was very much about like, I was like, I hear you. I'm like, mm-hmm. I, I understand what you're saying, but I'm like, I totally get un- understand what my character was saying in terms of like, if you impose, mm-hmm. you know, if, if you impose a, 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 a moral code on a culture 
like even if it's completely it's completely opposite of yours you are you know and it may be something that within your culture is like deplorable but within their culture it's a part of their culture it's like yeah. you know it's it, I, I don't think it's a black and white issue and i don't think it's easy and i think i, I give seth a lot of credit for yeah, like, yeah going, like you said to, it's not a black like, or white like issue. these these things are very they're, like they're going on with us it's yeah. not just you know it's these are some wonderful metaphors that he's setting up and they're not they're not easy there's you no know, right or there's no quite right or wrong answer to a lot of the things that are that are brought up for instance yeah there's like, no there's certainly no absolute and there's certainly nothing that's easy yeah like as it. as uh, you know as americans you know we see stuff going on in another culture like a middle eastern culture the exactly way that, you know true women we can't just show up and say this is wrong just because yeah. it's it's right to them and it's wrong to us and who's to say which one's well I, I have no problem saying which ones I think is better, but that's from my point of no, view, right? No, exactly. And it's like, I may agree. I may absolutely agree. And this is kind of what, you know, within the small bit that I had within my character. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's all, and it's the way that I felt myself. Uh, it was kind of like, no, I agree. I, I think that, um, you know, Havina's character, Rena Owen's character, I was like, mm -hmm. I, they're right. They're absolutely right. But like, if we're just going to sit there and if we're going to dictate policy, yeah, like who, who, who decides that? Like who, who decides what's right and wrong? Like where's the, where's, where's the final word? At? Mm -hmm. Especially when you know, we, in a show like this, where you're going well beyond what's going on on one planet. And then you have all these planets that you right, have to exactly. deal with and all these different cultures. So it's, 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 it's. I love that it's complicated. It's not easy. Yeah. There's a lot of endings to episodes where, if this were on a Star, if this were a Star Trek episode, I know exactly how it would end. Uh, but on the Orville, a lot of times it's like, ooh, it's very. Uh, 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 <laughs> it, it's toting the line there, but you know, it wasn't quite happy ending. Wasn't quite. Yeah. Uh, a sad ending, and that was yeah. the case with this episode when yeah. Vic, Victor totally. Garber's character stands up and he says. I have a compromise. Let's just right. uh, let's just be cool right now and do nothing on the yeah, other side. Yeah, exactly. And that's basically what it was. And but I was kind of like, but that's politics. Mm -hmm. You know, that's politics in any world. Is that a lot of the time? There's, I think, there's a lot of like just, uh, you know, sleight of hand and mm -hmm. really kind of like going, we're making movement happen, but we're not really changing anything and yeah, so we're, we're not changing you know, anything but we're not hurting anything or we're doing something so as not to make anything worse but also it's not going to be any better that, or as, uh, and as you know i think happens so so often in today's world you know it's like ultimately what you're trying to do is delay a decision you know <laughs> to delay a decision yeah because, yeah delay you know maybe you can to make it so down... some other people have to deal with it later on exactly yeah yeah totally totally now, you have a long on IMDb, which I have pulled up right here because the uh -huh. internet and technology are awesome. You 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 have a long list of of credits on you know uh, TV shows, uh, TV movies, some short films. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you got a lot of things in production right now. Yeah. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. You got like eight things going on. Six yeah, of there's a lot going on. Yeah, you're filming things. Uh, is this your first sci-fi experience being on the Orville? Um, no. I actually did a film um, about... Well, it was a while ago. It was probably about 13 years ago. And it was actually only... A, it was a student film mm -hmm. for uh, LA Film School. But... I mean, it was like on a space station and it was absolutely like they had set up. It was like a very kind of AI world that this guy had set up and that, it, you know, it was really the, the dude who directed it and who wrote and directed it um, was was, you know, in, in many ways really ahead of his time because it, he really um was exploring a lot of the ideas of her in terms of, you know, mm. like the film her where yeah. it's like, all right, well, what's, Love that you know, the, the, this character, the main character of the movie was kind of chasing this AI uh, creature person mm. who wasn't really a person. And I was supposed to be the, or I, I had played the, um, 
um, basically the commander of this ship and everything. And I was like, well, it's not really, you know, a presence. And he was like, well, it is. And that was basically the kind of the conflict of this entire film was we were on this space station and this dude wanted to be, you know, he wanted permission to leave to kind of chase this presence throughout mm -hmm. the universe. And we were kind of like, yeah, you're going, you're going out to the universe and you don't even know where this presence is. So, you know, it's, so you're yeah, because, because it's artificial. So yeah. it's so you're like an old hand. You're an old hand here in the sci-fi yeah, universe. Exactly. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You, you, <laughs> um, now, is this the first production you've done that basically was like, you will tell nobody what happened here today? <laughs> for, pretty much for the most part. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, 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 they're yeah. very hardcore. And I understand it. They're, um, besides just they're very passionate about the work that they do, the entire production, everyone that works on it. They they appreciate the fans so much that they really try their best to make sure the fans are going to be surprised. They, mm -hmm. So they, they keep it all under wraps. So I was, yeah. uh, I was, what was it like for you not being able to, you know, tell anybody what was going on? I mean, I'm sure you, Honest, you would tell people honestly, you were Honestly, on the show. we're at this point, you're so, to a, to a certain extent, you're kind of used to it. It's like, actors especially you know over the last it feels like it's really over the last five years yeah um the social you know, media years yeah yeah it, it really is i mean er, since the so social media age has kind of really come to to where it is now where it's mm. just so overwhelming and such a part of everything I think most actors are used to like, just don't open your mouth. Don't post anything. Don't tell anybody, you yeah. know, because it's like so many actors, um, you know, that I know that I, that pretty much everybody mm -hmm. knows got busted, you know, in one way or another. Yeah. And so I've learned at this point that really to a certain extent, no matter how small a project it is, it's like, don't tell anybody about it. You know, yeah. I'll go home and tell my wife about it, but yeah. you know, that's, <laughs> that, 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 that's about it. So she's the you one know? to get all, all the juicy details. She gets from. all the juice. Yeah. <laughs> Cause she, she, gets, she didn't have she to sign anything. Dirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm dealing with that a little bit right now. There's uh, some with the Orville, there's some Orville, uh, a leak that just came out like a, a, a one that uh -huh. really shows what's going on, at, at least for a scene. Yeah. So before, in the previous seasons, you know, I'd find things out and I would put two and two together and I'd scour the uh -huh. internet and be able to make yeah. some pretty educated guesses. And, but I've, we've, I've become such a, you know, the fandom, <laughs> uh, I'm a, you know, I'm a huge part of the fandom, uh, you know, as far as having a relationship in there. And uh, and I love the show, and I've gotten to know people that work on the show. Mm -hmm. And now I'm t at the point where I'm like, mm, I don't want to spoil it for for us fans either. So, uh, yeah. So I'm, now I'm like, well, I'm going to put out a video about it, but I'm going to put out a video that there is a spoiler, but I'm not going to tell you about it because uh, you know, a show like this and the internet, the internet will take something and just accelerate yeah. it to the nth degree so i'm like yeah oh, how do i respond do this responsibly which as before yeah. would not would not have been a thing it's also the kind of thing where it's like i don't know about you because i mean you know i i spoilers i mean i guess there's 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 an element of excitement with spoilers that mm -hmm. you know like it's it's again it's another element of what has come out these last five to ten years of just with with the web of this just this urge of people always just wanting to kind of get ahead of the ball game and everything mm -hmm. i for me personally i like to wait i don't yeah. like spoilers it's like i really really like i want to be surprised i want to see it the first time i want to you know so so for me in terms of like having to deal with that in terms of like signing ndas and not talking about it like that's fine for me because it's like that's the way I want things to like, I want to be surprised. I don't mm -hmm. like, you know, it takes all, it takes a lot when something, you know, when something comes down, you know, and I mean, we've got, you know, we got freaking star Wars coming out in a month and I just feel like I'm just sitting here going, la, 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 la. Yeah. You know, like, well, star Wars, especially like, don't tell me anything. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to know anything. Don't tell me anything. Yeah. Star Wars, especially like, there's, this, there's this new movement. That's very new to society where people are, uh, with Star Wars especially, are actively looking for 
yeah. spoilers. Like they want yeah. it to be spoiled for themselves. And I'm like, well, first off, any mm-hmm. any information that you're given, true or not, in our heads will never. <laughs> it might sound incredibly stupid. Like you know, whatever you find out might sound incredibly stupid in your head, but then you see it on screen, you're like, oh, that was great. But you've already, right, exactly. You've already built up exactly. this expectation, or you know, and so it kind of ruins the experience. And I, I also, I hate. You know, usually when I wanted to go see a movie, I would hardly see a, you know, maybe a teaser trailer down the road. And I wouldn't think too much about it because I wanted to be surprised. But now that I'm covering a show, I'm like, well, I have to have things to talk about, but I'm trying to adapt. Yeah, Yeah, it's hard. It's it's for for you, Mm -hmm. for someone who's creating content and stuff like that. And since that's a part of your job online, it's, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I, I get it. You know, it's it's a tough balance. It's not easy, but. You know, it is hard. And I mean, the thing is, as well, is that it does, not always, but I think it can, you know, it can influence things. It can, Mm -hmm. if people get caught up in a wave, uh, I mean, you know, to keep on the Star Wars uh, train or whatever, I really thought, um, you know, I thought that, like, when Solo was released, I thought there was a wave Mm -hmm. uh, that came out. Like right as so right before Solo was released, that people were just kind of like, I saw it or it stinks or I heard it's awful yeah. and I think it's terrible, and I think they got screwed because yeah, I I think do people too, cause... stayed away. And honestly, I went and saw the film with like my wife and like five friends, and I was like, Solo for me, it just for me, and again maybe it's just a personal thing. Solo for me was the first one that I was like, oh, I want to follow this story. I, I hope they yeah. do two or three more films, and they're not going to do them. I was exactly the same way. They're not going to do them. Well, you know, anytime and I, there's... And I was like, that sucks. I'm like, they got fucked, you know, before mm-hmm. they even started. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, it's... Yeah. Well, there was rumors bad. of drama on set and having to make changes. And so, the which was true. There, it was true. Uh, yeah. But, you know, but <laughs> whether or not that affects the film is a completely different issue. So yeah. people would hear the drama side of things that are going on, so they apply it to the entire experience. Right, exactly. Which, you know, leaves them, uh, you know, they don't want to see it. I saw it. I stopped caring about Star Wars a long time ago because, you know, Star Wars is, for my entire life, has been everywhere on every single carton at the right, store. Right, exactly. So you're just getting, uh, yeah, so exactly. It's like, I still appreciate Star out. Wars, but I'm just tired of being bombarded with it. But, <laughs> but I saw Solo, I was like, oh, wait a minute, that was a great movie. I totally yeah. dug it. It's too, it's... It's too bad it got, uh, I don't know, people's, like I said, people's expectations uh, were kind of soured because of the drama side. I think so, too. But anyway, I think that, you know, getting back to to what you were talking about, it's like, you know, um, uh, you you know, you can't avoid it. It's a part of the world that we're living in now. Mm -hmm. And I I mean, I, I, I... I, I can't imagine how hard it is for these producers. Yeah, <laughs> because like the... to try to to try to keep this contained, I I just don't know how you do it. Yeah, I, it was I... season one and season two was tough because a because uh, a lot of the people just on the set, the the actors and stuff, were just posting innocent social media stuff. But then right. someone like me sees what they post, so I'm like, oh well, I see that in the background, I see that, and then my brain just starts working. And you're gonna so, go, yeah, so, yeah. Exactly. So I'm able to yeah. figure figure stuff out. But now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to do, well, it's not even that I'm trying. It's it's what I prefer, always preferred to do. It's the reason I started doing content creation is predictions and speculation. You know, the type of thing where you're standing around yeah. with your friends and you're mm-hmm. like, well, I think this is going to happen because of this or so that. Uh, you know, and the, that's the, the fun, fun part of it. Exactly, the fun part of it. That's the part fun of part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want to keep you too long here. We we had a, a great conversation. I, and no, you, it's been great, man. And it was great to catch up with you. I feel like totally, man. We, we we hung out that one night. We brought in the new year forever ago, and I feel like uh, it's the next day. It's the next I, day. I, it's totally, a little cloudy. Totally. You know, we, there were some yeah. drinks had, but but it feels <laughs> it like it was New Year's Eve. Yeah, New Year's Eve. I remember that part. It was. It did yeah, happen yeah, yeah. in a year. In one totally, of the years totally. that happened. <laughs> but I totally hear you, man. It was like I remember. I I really when you reached out, I was like, oh my god, I remember that dude. And I was yeah. like, I it's and it really has been. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh, it's been ten years. It's yeah. like literally been ten years. Yeah. Well, that's the um, thing with 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 social LA, media as well. Know? Well, yeah, that's LA as well. Yeah, that's, it's that's one LA. thing with social media is, you know, you're kind of getting these little these little hits of you know people that you that you know 
and you're seeing them in your newsfeed and your brain forgets, oh, I haven't talked to that person right, in exactly. so long. So you forget to talk to people. I forget to mm-hmm. call family and stuff because I kind of feel like I've had contact like, with oh, well, them. Well, I've been keeping up with them in my feed, you know. it's Yeah, yeah social yeah, media totally. is making us uh, less social, I would think. That's well, the message to, from this uh, interview, you guys. <laughs> exactly. I hope we've all learned something today, audience. <laughs> Um, I know. I well, have. it's definitely a sign that we gotta we gotta get together, man. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Like, let's, well, let's, well, I'm far away I'm, now. I'm far away now. How far away? I'm uh, how far away? <laughs> I'm a 24 hour drive away. I'm in the middle of the country. I had to escape, which is why we're not, <laughs> which is why we're not uh, doing this in person. Where are you? I'm in Tulsa. I didn't even know. I'm in Tulsa. You're- Oh my God! You're in Tulsa. Yeah. Oh I'm my in, gosh. I'm in Tulsa. Where in Where in Tulsa? You gotta, now. Now we're gonna. Now I'm gonna get really geeky because my best friend's wife is from Tulsa. So. Oh well, my address is no. I'm just uh. <laughs> just just eastern just middle eastern of Tulsa. Tulsa. All Tulsa how you, is how Tulsa. How are you liking Tulsa? How How are you liking being out there in the middle? Oh, actually, it's great. the 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 city of Tulsa is great especially that's what i've heard i've heard tulsa yeah. is awesome there's a, uh, i wouldn't want to live anywhere else in this state <laughs> uh, the, yeah, yeah yeah the goal is to make it back home uh, uh eventually but right now this this is great uh the oh, yeah, traffic that's... is a lot better than what you've been dealing with uh without a doubt i have no i i have no doubt <laughs> yeah absolutely and then you know the fires and stuff i'm so glad you haven't burned up or anything i know the entire state yeah is on man fire. i was i was driving up to the studio here on the way over and i actually was it was the first time i'd been on the 405 mm-hmm. in probably about a month and man it was driving by the getty it was uh, it was a little chilling it's like because just the side of the hills just charred oh wow it's, gone. it's even just gone it's even there because i used to live right there i used to live right there in brentwood uh right on the other side oh yeah the other well side. i told you know my 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 wife works at ucla mm-hmm. and i i was driving I, when i was driving at the 405 i told her i was like man i'm like you guys got lucky because i'm like if this thing had jumped the highway mm-hmm. brentwood would have been in trouble i'm like there's a lot you know, of uh, very expensive, <laughs> very expensive oh, yeah. real estate on the other side of uh, very was, expensive uh, real estate. Yeah, yeah, over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. Not on totally. my side of Brentwood. My side of Brentwood was the apartment side. The other side of the street <laughs> is the mansion side. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, what do you uh, what do you got uh, coming up? What do you got going on that you're excited about? Um, well, I'm going to be shooting a film called My House. It's going to be, a, it's a short film, uh, kind of a semi-biographically based film uh, by a woman named Mary Elizabeth Boylan. She's fantastic. Uh, I've, I've definitely got some other irons in the fire doing some voiceover stuff. Nice. Uh, I'm doing some dubbing, starting to do some dubbing work, which is great. You're hoping uh, to I've turn that into dubstep. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of writing as well. I've been yeah. doing some storytelling, like some moth stuff. So nice. I've really been getting into that. But really, more than anything right now, uh, I'm just starting to get prepared uh, for my honeymoon. My wife and I are finally going on our honeymoon. Finally. You got married in a while December. ago, didn't you? We did. We did. But we're finally getting around to our honeymoon. So we're trying to get that lo- like locked in and locked and loaded because we leave on December 14th. So we're like, man, we got to get the- well, well, you're right there in we'll L.A. Go. I think you guys should probably just go to, you know, be contest, you know, go to the audience of The Price is Right as much as you can until you <laughs> exactly. win, until you win that honeymoon. <laughs> Tell Drew I sent you. <laughs> now, totally. we talked about social media. Is, is Are you a person that cares about people finding you on social media? Or, or are you you can a... find me on mo- social media. Uh, my Twitter is McLeanX. Uh, my Instagram is Wolf Actor. Uh, and then they can just find me on Facebook with Mark McLean Wilson. So All right, sounds you know, good. Those are at, pretty much the main three that I'm on at this point. Nice. Well, I'm thinking of you as you know being on the Orville. Uh, they called you Salean Delegate. Yes. Uh, but F. Murray freaking Abraham was only called Chairman. So <laughs> you had a longer longer name than than he had. But I'm I'm calling you uh, Mardis. Which oh, is, like uh, yeah, all, uh, you know, you got Mark. And then all slain males, their names end with a D-I-S spelling. Oh, I like that. Yeah, so like you're going to be Mardis. And then we'll just I have been it. hoping. I was like, you know, I did come through the episode. And I was like, you know, I'm like, they could, they could bring me back for something. They, they could, totally like, could. It's not like this is, I'm like, they could bring me back for something. So I, I, I have been 
deep in the recesses of my mind, I'm like, maybe they'll find something yeah. for me. Something well, if they, bring, if they bring if they bring F. Murray back, uh, you kind of you guys go you know hand in hand as you know you yeah. are part of of you know his team. Yeah, uh, his, exactly. The chairman's team. It's the two of you. So maybe yeah. they can't have him back unless they have you back. Let's let's hope so. Let's cross <laughs> fingers. <laughs> now, one thing that we do here is, uh, yeah, uh, uh, with the Orville, the Orville fandom, our standard greeting comes from uh, season two, episode one of the Orville, which is Jaloja. So we say Jaloja to each other, which I'm not going to tell you what that means. You can go and watch that episode and find out All for right, yourself. Cool. But we also are fans of Star Trek, so we say Jalo Jalong and Prosper. So if you I want like to that. give me a Jalo Jalong and Prosper, we will head out with this interview in style. Jalo Jalong and Prosper, my friend. Nice. Jalo Jalong and Prosper to you as well. Yeah.